Pennsylvania Attorney General Bruce Beamer and all the other elected officials, uh, it means a lot for you to be here with us. If all goes well in 17 days, we are looking forward to working with you on behalf of Pittsburgh. Some of you know that I have a special place in my heart for Pennsylvania and I am excited about helping in any way that we can uh, for Pittsburgh, Allegheny County and Western Pennsylvania to keep moving forward with confidence and optimism about what's possible for the future we want to create together. And I am thrilled to be here with Tim Kaine. You know, I asked him... I asked him to be my running mate because I knew he would be one of the smartest, toughest, most qualified vice presidents we have ever had. And I, I also knew he had never lost an election. So I kind of figured that might rub off on me a little bit. And now that I've gotten to spend more time with him and with his wonderful wife, Anne, and their family, I'm even more confident that he will be such an extraordinary leader for our country. He's not just smart and tough and qualified. Tim Kaine is as good and decent a person as you'll ever meet. And I am, I am deeply honored to have him by my side in this campaign. Now, Tim and I are excited by all the energy and enthusiasm that we're seeing across the country and particularly here in Pennsylvania. Um, but, but both of us, both of us, unlike our opponent, do not believe we can do this alone. We believe that we're going to do this by working with all of you and that we're going to come together in the next 17 days and convince everybody you can to get out and vote because whatever issue you care about, it's going to be on the ballot. It may not be listed, but it will be on the ballot. Whether you care about new good jobs with rising incomes or you care about better education or you care about what we can do to get the cost of prescription drugs down, whatever it is you care about, it's literally going to be on that ballot. Now my name and Tim's name may be the ones on the ballot, but we're going to be representing everything that you and we hope we can do together in our country. And we're, we're going to need help doing that uh, after uh, the election. And that's why I hope you will do everything you can to elect Katie McGinty, your next senator. You know, Katie is the daughter of a Philadelphia police officer. I think she's one of ten children, right? One of ten children. She has devoted her professional life to protecting working families. I've known her now for more than 20 years, when she was really young, and I've seen that same can-do spirit. She just gets up every day and says, what can she do to fight for healthier neighborhoods, to keep our kids healthy, to fight for cleaner air and cleaner water, to really help people make the most out of their own lives? And now she's running for the Senate, because, like uh, Tim and I, she believes our economy should work for everyone, not just those at the top. <laughs> Katie is exactly the kind of partner we need in the Senate, but more importantly, she's exactly the kind of senator that Pittsburgh and Western Pennsylvania need in the Senate. We have got to get things done for the people of Pennsylvania and America. And Katie will help us break through the gridlock, actually make a difference in people's lives, help us create 
more good jobs with rising incomes, guaranteeing equal pay for women, defending Planned Parenthood. And I, I think it's pretty clear when you look at Katie's opponent. He still refuses to stand up to Donald Trump. Now, you know, a lot of Republicans have. They have had the grit and the guts to stand up and say, he does not represent me. But Pat Toomey heard Donald attack a grieving Gold Star family who lost their son in Iraq. He heard Donald call Mexican immigrants rapists. He heard him say terrible things about women. He heard him spread the lie that our first black president wasn't really born in America. Now, how much more does Pat Toomey need to hear? If he doesn't have the courage to stand up to Donald Trump after all this, then can you be sure he'll stand up for you when it counts against powerful interests? So, you know, when I look at this, I I'm thinking to myself, you know, we got work to do in Washington. And I know it's not easy. I understand we've got some real challenges. I believe we can do it. I, I wouldn't be standing here. Tim wouldn't be with me. But we need people in Washington who put you first, who get up every day thinking about middle class families, who worry about where you're going to get the money to send your kids to college, how you're going to take care of your mom or dad because they're failing and what are you going to do for them? How are you going to be able to deal with all the challenges? That's what I have tried to do my entire life. That's who you should be electing, people who care about you, care about your families, your children. Now, as Tim said, he asked if any of you watched uh, the debate on Wednesday. Well, I'll tell you, that was the third and last time I will ever have to debate Donald Trump. <laughs> this, I have now spent four and a half hours on stage with Donald, proving once again I have the stamina to be president and commander in chief. And after every one of those debates, people have said, how did you do that? And, you know, really, you just have to be of good cheer when you find yourself in a situation like that. You're in front of, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80 million people. And so no matter what he was saying, I just kept thinking of all the people I've met throughout this campaign. Just earlier today, I met Henry, who's over there. Henry's on top of his dad's shoulder. And Henry gave me a note saying that, he hoped I'd be president. And you know, I really want to be president for all of the kids in America to do everything I can to help you. <laughs> you know, I also did have a chance to talk about some of the important concerns that people have shared with me. From the very first day I started this campaign, back in April of 2015, people have been telling me what's on their minds, and it is one of the greatest honors. You know, sometimes it's just fleeting. You know, I'll be in a coffee shop shaking hands, or I'll, later on I'll come down, shake hands on a rope line, or just running into somebody. And that person, that man or woman or that young person takes a moment to stop you know looks into my eyes I can tell they're trying to take my measure and I am grateful that they take their vote their choice so seriously and then they might say something like I have a really 
terrible problem in my family. My son or my daughter has gotten addicted to opiates or to heroin. What are you going to do about it? Or maybe they'll say, my brother has schizophrenia and we can't afford to get, them the, get him the kind of consistent care he needs. Or maybe they'll say, I am a diabetic and the drug company has just raised the cost of insulin and I can't afford it. What are you going to do about it? That is the right question to ask anybody running for president because at the end of the day, this is about you. As I said the other night, we're going to invest in the middle class. We're going to grow this economy from the middle out and the bottom up, not the top down. And we're going to make sure we produce enough good jobs with rising incomes so that every single person, especially every single young person in America, can go as far as your hard work and talent will take you. Now, I, I gotta say, I believe in hard work. That's how I was raised. I believe that you gotta work for what you get in life. But I think we gotta knock down some of the barriers that stand in the way of people getting ahead and going as far as they should. And, and for me, that starts believing by believing in our country. You know, there has been no other place in the history of the world that has given so much opportunity to so many. Do we have problems? Yeah, we have problems. Do we have challenges? Of course we do. We're human beings. But boy, there is no more blessed place. And Donald Trump did something the other night. No. No other presidential nominee has ever done of either party. He refused to say that he would respect the results of this election. Now, make no mistake about this, my friends. He is threatening our democracy. Look, I've lost elections. You don't feel very good the next day, believe me. But we know in our country the difference between leadership and dictatorship. Right? You know, the peaceful transition of power is one of those things that sets us apart. And whether you support me or you support my opponent, together we must show that we support American democracy. And I believe... Both Donald Trump and I should be grateful for the opportunities that our country has given us. And the best way to demonstrate that we support our democracy is to turn out and vote. And there is an inspiring story being written by people across America right now. We have just reached a milestone. More than 200 million Americans are registered to vote in this election. And you know what? That includes 50, more than actually, more than 50 million young people, more than ever before. I find that a very hopeful sign. And here in Pennsylvania, hundreds of thousands of more voters are registered than were in 2012. So what does this tell us? I think it tells us no matter how much negativity is out there, something exciting is happening right now. People are coming together, Democrats, Republicans, Independents, all to reject hate and division. And in the states where they can, people are motivated to vote early to defend core American values and embrace a future where every person counts, everyone has a place, everyone can contribute. Because you see, despite what Donald Trump may think, most Americans really believe that we can do better. Most Americans really believe women should be respected.
Most Americans really believe that workers should be paid fairly. Most Americans believe that the United States should work with our allies to lead the world and keep us safe. So the energy we are seeing in the final weeks of this campaign is about more than winning an election. It is about standing up for the kind of country we want, for ourselves and for our children. And it's about the lessons we want to teach our sons and daughters. I want all of you to know that if Tim and I are fortunate enough to be your president and vice president, that we will work with everyone. Now, I imagine here in Allegheny County, and if you're from further west, you probably know people who are thinking about voting for Donald Trump. And here's what I want you to tell them. I want you to tell them that I understand that they need a president who cares about them, will listen to them, and I want to be their president too. Because, you know, whether you agree or, or disagree with me, whether you vote for me or vote against me, I believe we can disagree without being disagreeable. I've seen that. I know it can happen. And I know there are a lot of people right here in Pennsylvania who have a lot of questions. They want to know how do we move forward better. They want to know what's going to happen to their town where there used to be a lot of jobs and there aren't as many anymore. They're upset about what they see happening around them. I get that. But anger is not a plan. And we need, we need to work together. We need plans that will help us deal with the legitimate concerns and questions that people have here in Pennsylvania. I think that's what our whole country needs right now. That's what I will try to do. I'm not going to pretend that we can just snap our fingers and solve our problems. That doesn't happen in the real world. But I know we can make progress together. And the choice we face in this election is stark, especially when it comes to the economy. Tim and I believe that when the middle class thrives, America thrives. And when we invest in working families in the middle class, in small businesses, we can make the economy work again for everybody. Now, I think it's fair to say that both Donald Trump and Pat Toomey have a different perspective. They believe, and they believe this, that if you give trillions of dollars, that's trillion with a T, trillions in tax cuts to the wealthy, to millionaires, to billionaires, to corporations, it will all trickle down to everybody else. <laughs> Has it worked before and it's caused us a lot of messes that we've had to clean up. And I've been privileged to see presidents up close and personal. Right? Married to one, that's right. Worked for one. And here's what I know. That when you focus on helping the middle class, you end up lifting everybody. When you focus on helping the top, you help the top. That is not good enough. Donald likes to say he's on the side of American workers, but his actions tell a different story. Yes, he's bought cheap, Chinese steel and aluminum for his construction projects. He should be buying good American-made steel that supports good American jobs. I'd like to hear Donald explain to American steel workers filing for unemployment why he put Chinese steel workers to work instead of steel workers here in Pennsylvania. And for all of his talk about putting America first, he's made many of his products in 12 different countries. So if he wants to make America great again, why doesn't he start by making things in America again? And we now know, 
We now know he hasn't paid a dime in federal income taxes for years. He says that makes him smart. Well, I don't know how smart you have to be to lose a billion dollars in a year in the first place. Especially, answer me this, how do you lose a billion dollars when you're in the casino business? <laughs> Never could figure that out. But what it means is that every one of us here has paid more in federal income taxes than a billionaire has. That is wrong, and we're going to end those kinds of loopholes and gimmicks. I'll tell you what, it also means that Donald has contributed zero, zero for our military, zero for our vets, zero for Pell Grants to help young people go to college, zero for our highways, zero for everything. And yet he stands up on the stage and he criticizes America. Well, it's unfair and it's wrong. With your help, we're going to make the biggest investment in new jobs since World War II. Jobs and infrastructure. Our roads, our bridges, our tunnels, our ports, our airports, our water systems all need help. And those are a lot of good jobs waiting to be done. Jobs that can't be exported out of Pennsylvania. I believe we can bring advanced manufacturing back to the United States. That's why we will invest $10 billion in a Make It in America partnerships that bring together workers and unions and businesses, universities and community colleges. Some country is going to take the lead with precision machining. Some country is going to take the lead with 3D printing. We invented both of those technologies. We should take the lead and we should have the jobs. We're also going to fight climate change with clean renewable energy jobs. going to help small businesses, which will create two-thirds of all the new jobs in America. And we're going to defend your right to organize and bargain collectively for higher wages and benefits. Don't let anybody fool you, my friends. Assaults on worker rights and on unions is an assault on the middle class. It is time to say loudly and clearly, right to work is wrong for workers and wrong for America. So I've set some big goals. I'm excited about what we're going to do. Um, and it's all going to put people to work right here. And sometimes folks say to me, well, how are you going to get that done? You know, you go to the Congress. I said, well, first of all, I hope we're going to elect some more Democrats. That would be number one. But number two, number two, I, I think it's going to be a very simple question. Are members of Congress, members of the Senate, going to be on the side of the rich, the powerful, and the wealthy, or on your side? And you know what? They're going to have to answer that question. Because if they stay beholden to the special interests, if they continue to do the bidding of the lobbyists and the lawyers and others who stand there outside their doors, I've been in the Senate, I've seen it, I know it. If they're going to continue to do the work of those who are already privileged in America, then I want to make sure that they don't come back to Washington after the next election. Look, we're in a great, great high school here, and I'm so proud to be here. And so we're going to do more to be a good partner with education, especially with educators. We're going to start with universal pre-K. We want good schools with good teachers in every zip code so every kid gets a world-class education. And I want, I 
want us to bring technical education back to high school. I think it was a mistake when we took it out. There are a lot of good jobs that you can be prepared for in today's economy. Coming out of high school, maybe going to community college, going into an apprenticeship program. And I want to lift up that work. A four-year college degree should not be and is not the only way to have a good job with a rising income and a satisfying life. We're going to make public colleges and universities tuition free for any families making less than $125,000 a year. And we're going to help you pay down your college debt. It's going to be great to help you pay it back as a percentage of your income at your job so you're never on the hook for more than you can afford. I worked on this with Senator Bernie Sanders and it's going to help to save It's going to help save people thousands of dollars. In fact, after here, or maybe while you are here, you can go to HillaryClinton.com slash calculator to see how much you and your family can save. We want you to know we're going to deliver results for you. I mean, ultimately, it's pretty simple. I think the American dream is big enough for everybody, and I want everybody to have a chance to get your piece of the American dream. So there's a lot of work we're going to be doing. We need to raise the national minimum wage. People who work full time should not be mired in poverty. We are, as Tim said, going to guarantee equal pay for women. You know, look. It's not just a woman's issue. If you have a mother, which all of us do, if you have a mother, a wife, a daughter, or a sister who's working, it's your issue. It's good for the entire family. It's good for our economy. So my friends, there's a lot, a lot for us to do in the next 17 days, because we've got to get the word out. We've got to tell everybody what we're doing and, and why this election is so critically important. And that's where all of you, all of you come in. If you do know people who are thinking about voting for our opponent, well, you may. <laughs> you know, I hope you will stage an intervention. <laughs> and, and I do hope you'll talk about you know, the reality versus the demagoguery of what we've seen in this campaign. You know, we need to come together around all of the issues that are important to everybody. And as I said in the beginning, whatever issue you care about, it's going to be on the ballot. I care a lot about making sure that women and girls are treated with dignity and respect that they deserve in our country. I care a lot about making sure that we save Social Security and we ensure that everybody has the benefits that they need in order to be able to live a decent life in retirement. And boy, do I care a lot about our Constitution. And maybe it's because on your behalf I went to 112 countries as your Secretary of State. I met a lot of people who envy us because we've been so steady and so committed to our constitutional system and our, our values. And what I hope is that you care as deeply as our founders did, as our parents and grandparents did, because maybe they came from somewhere else where they weren't treated right. Maybe they saw firsthand what it meant to be deprived of the rule of law. You know, every time Donald Trump says he wants to jail his opponent, meaning me, um, I think to myself, you know, we don't do that in America. We actually have laws and courts and an independent judiciary.
or, or you know, when he, when he blows up at a journalist or, you know, criticizes the press and goes on and on and on. You know, I get criticized by the press. I know that's part of our democratic system. We believe in a free press, and boy, if you go to countries where there isn't one, you will understand why that is so important. And when he says there should be a religious test, a religious test for people at our borders, a country founded on religious freedom, you have to ask yourself, who's going to conduct the test? Are we going to get a quiz? And what if the border security official doesn't believe you? Who gets to decide whether you come in or out based on your religion? And if you haven't seen it yet, I hope you will go and look at the extraordinary statement by Mr. Khan on YouTube in a new video that we have put out. You remember he pulled out a constitution at our convention. And he reveres our constitution. And for good reason. Because he too came from a place where there was no rule of law to speak of. So whatever issue you care about, this is an issue that will be decided by this election. And that's why I'm reaching out to Republicans, Democrats, Independents, everyone. I know that if we bring our talent, our energy, and our ambition to the work of building our country, we're going to see the best days of America ahead of us. And when your children and your grandchildren ask what you did in 2016, when everything was on the line, I hope you'll say you voted for a better America. So here's we go. Just remember, you got to get out and vote. You got to get everybody you know to get out and vote. If you don't know where you're supposed to go vote, please go to IWillVote.com. You can put your information in, and it's the magic of the Internet. They'll tell you where you're supposed to vote. You can go to HillaryClinton.com and sign up to volunteer, or you can take your phone out right now and text J-O-I-N, join, to 47246. And if we can get all of you and everybody you know involved in these next 17 days, I will tell you this. It's easy to forget how far our country has come. There are a lot of people here, as I said, whose parents and grandparents came as immigrants. My grandfather, Hugh Rodham, came as an immigrant as a young boy and settled in Scranton. And he went to work in the Scranton lace mills. He went to work when he was still in his teens. He worked there until he retired at the age of 65. He believed in our country. He believed in the kind of future that he could get through his hard work. That's what I want everybody in our country to believe again. We're going to unleash the talents, the innovation, and the energy that brought people like my grandfather here, but which we will harness for the future. Don't let anybody tell you America's best days are behind us. Don't believe that for a minute. We're going to pull together. We're going to make it clear that confidence and optimism, respect for each other, bringing folks together who may disagree but can begin to try to find common ground is what's always worked and it will work again. Help us. Help us create that kind of future and help us prove once and for all that love trumps hate. Thank you all.
Pennsylvania Attorney General Bruce Beamer and all the other elected officials, uh, it means a lot for you to be here with us. If all goes well in 17 days, we are looking forward to working with you on behalf of Pittsburgh. Some of you know that I have a special place in my heart for Pennsylvania and I am excited about helping in any way that we can uh, for Pittsburgh, Allegheny County and Western Pennsylvania to keep moving forward. I've gotten to spend more time with him and with his wonderful wife Anne and their family, I'm even more confident that he will be such an extraordinary leader for our country. He's not just smart and tough and qualified. Tim Kaine is as good and decent a person as you'll ever meet. And I am, I am deeply honored to have him by my side in this campaign. Now, Tim and I are excited by all the energy and enthusiasm that we're seeing across the country and particularly here in Pennsylvania. What we can do to get the cost of prescription drugs down, whatever it is you care about, it's literally going to be on that ballot. Now my name and Tim's name may be the ones on the ballot, but we're going to be representing everything that you and we hope we can do together in our country. And we're, we're going to need help doing that uh, after uh, the election. And that's why I hope you will do everything you can to elect Katie McGinty, your next senator. Um, but, but both of us, both of us, unlike our opponent, do not believe we can do this alone. We believe that we're going to do this by working with all of you. And that we're going to come together in the next 17 days and convince everybody you can to get out and vote because whatever issue you care about, it's going to be on the ballot. It may not be listed, but it will be on the ballot. Whether you care about new good jobs with rising incomes, or you care about better education, or you care about forward with confidence and optimism about what's possible for the future we want to create together. And I am thrilled to be here with Tim Kaine. You know, I asked him... I asked him to be my running mate because I knew he would be one of the smartest, toughest, most qualified vice presidents we have ever had. And I, I also knew he had never lost an election. So I kind of figured that might rub off on me a little bit. And now 